are we taping? I need a new accountant. I need a new IT guy. I don't need a new art guy right now. Kelly's been doing a great job on the petitions. Everybody else is fucking pissing me off. <laughs> you ever get that that hanging flapping booger that just you're such a liar sometimes i'm tempted sand look but sometimes ow how about you ever get that tickle booger i never did get a tickle booger no. really yeah, no. <laughs> you ever get a snot bubble you ever get a snot bubble i, I I've never gotten one of those. Liar. I just don't know. Oh, yeah, maybe. Once. You've gotten a snot bubble. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> when you were a young lad and you were mounting some waif, you had you experienced a snot bubble. Probably so. And that's what which, she said. Which, which Alexander, why, you're getting better. At least you got your pants off this time before you achieve Shangri-La. Shangri-La. <laughs> Hold on. I gotta adjust my tidy whities Okay. So what's what's what do uh, skinny jeans and a cheap motel have in common? I don't know. Either one has ballroom. <laughs> okay. I don't wanna know. Ticklish snot bubble. <clears throat> Ticklish snot bubble. All right, here we go. What story was I going to tell again? Uh, the one about sending your guy down range without a cost. Oh. All right, are we ready to go? Go ahead, tell me when. And five, four, three, two. Stand by. Live from the land that freedom forgot, but if you're an illegal citizen, you can get a free college education. Yes, Governor Free Stuff signed the uh, executive order yesterday where illegal aliens, which we're not allowed to say anymore, no. if you tweet the I'm words illegal aliens, uh, Twitter will ban you. Uh, so all you hard-working, tax-paying uh, citizens, haha, -ha, you have to pay so we can pay for illegals. So a couple of things. A, uh, I was a victim of a road rage incident last week, and B, uh, I want to talk about my this? staff has no... Uh, you have not watching Ant's Rants. No, I, was out of I ranted about it. I was out of the... So I leave Arlington, Virginia. NRA board meetings, which were very productive... And I'm driving, and it's a two-lane highway. I want to say it's 50, Highway oh, yeah. 55. Okay. I don't, no, I don't know. Oh, yeah. Okay. So I'm driving, and uh, I pass a Jeep Cherokee or something, green. And he passes. I pass him on the left. And I can see that he looked at me funny. And all of a sudden, he starts in an erratic manner, weaving in and out of traffic to try to catch up to me. So I knew, I can tell, you know, you can you're, always trust your sixth sense. I knew that he was Not coming you, after you me. You had your car with you. I had the, the uh, Mercedes S550, which is wrapped in gun for hire. Wrapped. Yeah. So what I did was, to further oblige him, I moved into the slow lane, which allowed him to catch up to me in the fast lane. And at that point, he t cut the wheel of his car, forcing me into the shoulder, unless I want to smash into him. So I stop in the shoulder. He's half in the uh, slow lane, half in the shoulder, with traffic going around him, blowing a horn. It's like 55 mile an hour road. And he rolls down the passenger side window and he looks at me and goes, Do you want to kill me? I'm like, Excuse me? He goes, Do you want to shoot me in the head? And a bunch of other stuff. <laughs> and I looked at him. I said, Sir, I don't think you're getting enough oxygen in your diet. <laughs> I said, If I were you, I would move on your way and get the hell out of here. And he rolls the window up, and he pulls away like a nut with cars blowing the horn coming around him. I took another drag of my cigar, and I proceeded to drive. But, 
you know, we talk about this. A year and a half ago, Patty's daughter, Michaela, left uh, Nona's Pizzeria in Florham Park, and she had a, uh, a deplorable sticker on her car. And a, like a 35, 40-year-old man followed her screaming expletives out the window at a 20-year-old girl. Oh you know, Trump is this, and you're, you know, it's so admirable. You have such muscles to be able to do something like that. Eight years, Obama was president. Eight years, Clinton was president. Hillary stickers everywhere. I have never once hand gestured someone. Never, never. I have never run somebody down. I have never Brooklyn pinstriped a car because of their political affiliation or anything. You have to explain that to people. A Brooklyn pinstripe is when you take your key and you run a scratch down the side of the car so deep that it indents the metal. Okay, that's not keying a car, it's just scratching the paint. A Brooklyn pinstripe is like what an ex girlfriend does when she catches you cheating or something. <laughs> she, yeah, it sounds like it's spoken for <laughs> She Brooklyn pinstripes the entire car all the way down and it's dented, so the body shop can't just you know sand it and paint it, they have to do body work. So, <laughs> little bondo on this one, but, but what is it? What is it? What, what the left, I mean, I mean, I know we have Maxine Waters and everybody inciting violence now and go out and beat up, uh, you know, conservatives or whatever, but, man, we need to live as one nation under God, okay? Amen to that. Uh, what do you have to add to that, Sandy? It's crazy. <laughs> well, I mean, it's, it's, part of the, it's part of the plan, really. I mean, if you take a look at the word chaos. Uh, C-H-A-O-S? Yes. You will see that it is, it weaves itself in through every philosophy from, uh, from uh, uh, the Communist Manifesto to the Socialist Manifesto to the, uh, you know, the book we talked about um, eight years ago on the show, uh, The Coming Insurrection. The Coming Insurrection. Which read that book. Very important book to read, read that because book. you'll start to see. Uh, <laughs> and read Rules for Radicals, too. And Rules for Radicals. And, and you'll also see it in Radical Islam. And chaos, uh, in order to bring about, without getting too deep into the weeds, in order to bring about a change on any social scale, everybody is looking for chaos. If they can turn the world upside down, and in Islam specifically, it says that the, the Mahdi, the, 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 the coming of um, their, their savior, let's put it that way, in, in, in the Islamic faith, has to happen uh, during a period of chaos. They have to create chaos. And, and the, the Democrats are following the same plan. Yeah, everybody's following the same plan at this Europe, point. Europe. The globalists are freaking right. out. Yes. They're freaking out. And, and it's, it's, like I say, it's, it's not something that's just happening, and social media is really escalating this to a point. The um, Facebook and Twitter, Google, uh, Google. That video was released this Absolutely. week by uh, Breitbart, yep. an hour-long crying session after Trump was elected, right. and figuring out how they could change their al algorithms and stuff uh, so that they can get uh, more liberals in, uh, uh, elected in. No surprise. And, yeah. and these, this is coming from the platforms that were given uh, total immunity from uh, being uh, governed under the FCC. Right, so they have they, they were allowed to be independent. Let's put it that way, and now they're just abusing that entire uh, entire privilege. Yep. So you know you, we could not go on broadcast radio and say any of the things or censor any of the uh, of the people that they're censoring. Uh, we would be forced to allow uh, uh, dissenting opinions, which it should be. The internet should what has always been about more voices. Getting as many voices, if you're whacked, even the whacked out weirdos, that's the ones that you really want to be able to allow and protect. Not, not just calling whatever they deem hate speech. Let's talk about unhinged. I'm in Virginia, which you can get a carry permit. I have a car wrapped gun for hire with black tinted windows. You drive your car in an unsafe manner, weaving in and out of two lanes with oncoming traffic to catch up to me did that person not endanger himself and other people by doing that okay and then you have the seeds to cut me off and have an altercation with me in a vehicle wrapped gun for hire that i may have or may not have a gun yeah, but here's, here's the issue uh you were going through one of the most liberal parts of virginia you, correct you, right outside dc yeah, yeah i mean technically right outside. it's dc yeah right? so yeah you know, had you been out, say, toward Blacksburg or some area like that, or, or, or uh, even in the middle, even even in Richmond, 
uh, even down as far as Richmond, you'd be fine. But you were going through D.C. By the way, uh, Carry Guard was canceled this weekend, and uh, Family Weekend at University of Richmond was canceled because of uh, Flojo, Hurricane Flojo. Is coming through 87 foot waves. It's gonna be it's terrible. Okay, it's gonna bury so, the Smoky Mountains. So who knows what's gonna happen? Wow. But uh, so anyway, uh, I also found out that at least one member of my staff doesn't have any faith in me. You know, we bought these two GoPros for Gun for Hire Radio. So I said to one of my employees, one of the maintenance guys, I said, "Listen, I want to mount a GoPro on a Gun for Hire baseball cap facing back, and you wear it." And I'm going to wear a GoPro on a Gun for Hire hat facing forward. And then I'm going to shoot downrange with you running serpentine downrange. And his response was, uh, can I wear a bulletproof vest? And I said, D do you realize how you just insulted me? Why would you need to wear a bulletproof Absolutely vest? No You're, he's, he's assuming that I'm going to miss and I'm going right. to hit him. This is crazy. <laughs> By the way, this was all a joke and a prank. It's not something we would really do. We make sure everybody is uh, wears at least a vest. <laughs> <laughs> not not something not something you would normally do. This coming from uh, the man who, um, looking at it from outside uh, the studio window, the defibrillator, defibrillator on the wall says "members only." What's wrong with that? <laughs> the AED machine on the wall says "members only." So if you have a heart incident. Right. Uh, if you're a member, we'll use it. If you're not a member, we'll we have to call the EMTs, yeah. or you can join, <laughs> you can join right then right and there, there. You know, and it's a volunteer emergency uh, squad that, here. So you have a blue cross card, you just present did, your did, credit card, and did, you're good. We'll did you see it. the new Apple 4 watch? It will check your heart rate. Yeah. It will do EKGs. The Apple 4 will do The EKGs. Apple 4 watch will do EKGs. It will check your heart rate. If you fall... Like collapse or fall, if you do not I respond, yep. Yeah, if well, if you do not respond within 60 seconds, yeah. it will call your emergency contacts and it will call 911 with your location. Oh. Okay. If within it comes 60 out. seconds. Yes. So you're already one minute into. Yeah, the but still, free. but but it will check your it will check EKG your heart rate monitor your heart rate and everything. It's not out now, yet. If, it'll be if out. If you flatline, will it call any sooner? No. No, so. no, but uh, pretty cool, pretty cool <laughs> technology. I think yeah. you know uh, it works on Wi-Fi and cellular. You don't even need your phone. It, you know, you can just have uh, the watch, and it will uh, right work oh, through so the phone. So you can be without your phone. Yes, right? yeah, pretty. All right, well, Innovation's getting there. Hey, yeah, it really is. It's going to save lives. Oh, I guarantee for sure. it. Guarantee it. All right, we're saving lives. Coming back. <clears throat> I hate everybody. I hate everybody. I hate everybody. You're singing the I hate everybody. I hate oh, we're back? Okay, I was looking for the SafeCon ad because next weekend is SafeCon. Uh, SafeCon.net, John Willett uh, and his wife uh, Rachel broke their butts to get this off the ground. So uh, please be there. It's in uh, Cumberland County College in Vineland. And it's uh, NJSafeCon.net and it's info at NJSafeCon.com. Um, you can... Uh, uh, check it out. I'm going to be there. We're going to be recording Gun for Hire Radio uh, show 382 from there and also we'll be GoProing it as well. If anybody wants to wear uh, one on the back of their hat and go serpentine, just we'll let me film know. That too? Uh, I'm wow. going to film it, so I'm going to bring a camera too. I'm going to do a little bit about filming around the place and then I'll set a camera up like to just videotape any guests that we grab, any man on the street type stuff you want to do. Today's cigar from a customer is an Arturo Fuente Rosado Gran Reserva. And today's knife is another uh, collectible Brian tie that I have. That's a nice knife. Isn't that beautiful? It's very yeah. light, too. His stuff is very, very is light. A, uh, what's the, what's the uh, skins on it? Um, it's carbon fiber. Oh. It's carbon fiber with a, a, a stainless steel or a titanium insert. I don't really remember. But it's a really cool, nice, yeah, light little knife. The uh, pocket uh, clip is very, very uh, positive. It doesn't slip out of your pocket. And it's made in the old, good old U.S. of A. So. I just can't uh, have that in New York City. <clears throat> yeah, you can't have anything in New York anymore. Yeah. I spoke with Doug Ritter uh, from uh, KnifeRights.com uh, and KnifeRights.org. And they're working on uh, 
they, they were getting money from NRA Civil Rights Defense Fund, and they're, they're, they're mounting another lawsuit against uh, the Attorney General Cyrus Vance. Is that, uh, so, the, that, that law is the entire state of New York? The entire it? state, yeah, you're screwed. You can't have any type of auto assist where you, where you flick it with your finger or anything. And you, so you basically can carry an old Boy Scout pen knife. So even though, even something with a stud on nope. it, you can't even Nope, 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 nope. Wow. People are going to go to jail. Thousands get arrested every oh, year. Sure. Especially um, in uh, New York City. Yeah, again, it's all it's all frivolous stuff that we deal with. Yeah, I because wanna, the gangbangers crime just dropped. It plummeted. Yep, I want to take a, a minute and I want to uh, extend a thanks. You know, we have until about the 25th to get all the petitions uh, for NRA Board of Directors, and the, the website is calandroforNRA.com. Ammo Land sent the thing out. They sent a the mass email out. They put it on their website. They're supporting me 100%. But I want to take a minute to thank all the men and women that have been sending me petitions from all over the country. I've been getting some with one signature. I've been getting from Cliff Toy 40 or 50 signatures. No, probably 100 by now. Uh, Gary Allison hasn't sent them yet. Greg Zivolowski hasn't sent them yet, but they're all going to get them in to me by uh, September 25th. I'll be collecting signatures on the 22nd at SafeCon, coming back, wrapping everything up. Uh, Kelly and Matt that work for me, they've been calling the NRA Secretary's Office, which has been very gracious to verify uh, their people's NRA voting status. And right now we're averaging about 13% of the signatures I got are null and void. Uh, people who memberships expired, they weren't voting members, they weren't five years or more. We had one person uh, that signed my petition, bless their heart, but they haven't been an NRA member since 1989. Mm. Well, they, so, they had a good, good heart. Yes, I, I, God bless them. But uh, I need to get the 651 verified signatures and as many more as possible. There's a method behind my madness. So, And everybody's been punching it out and tweeting it out. And every day I'm amazed. I come in and there's like another 10 envelopes uh, from people all over the country. Yeah. So everybody keep doing it. And thank you all so much uh, for it. I'm 99% I'm, I'm sure I'm going to be running on petition. And then I'm going to leave everybody alone till about January because the ballots come out in February. And that's when I'm going to need everybody's help uh, to get as many, sig as many votes as possible from voting members. So I just want to thank everybody for that. It's been, um, it's been humbling, to be quite honest with you. Uh, you know, uh, Freddie and Brian from uh, Ammo Land have gone above and beyond the call of duty. Now, remember, because I'm running as under petition, does not mean uh, there's a there's a, a string here. Because sorry, because, I got it. Because I'm running on petition, does not mean I'm a, a dissenter or an insurgent. Okay. I was not nominated by the nominating committee. They had 56 people to choose from, and they had to pick 33 out of 56. Uh, many were incumbents who have served the NRA well. Some were not incumbents. So I'm running uh, because I said that I was going to run a petition, hoping I would get nominated and wouldn't need the petition. But since I didn't get nominated, I don't go back on my word. I'm going to trudge through and run on petition, which is a lot harder. But uh, a lot. Harder. Yes, I want to get on the NRA board because I feel I have a lot of ideas, and I think we need another battleground state person. I mean, like we talked about last week about what's going on with the Oklahoma State Rifle and Pistol Association. Right. You know, we have unity in New Jersey with CNJFO and uh, ANJRPC and the NRA. Uh, so I just want to lend another voice. I think that my experience in running such a diverse, successful range and being a two-way advocate since 1992, I think I can add a lot. Okay, I'm not going in there to turn everything upside down. I'm going in there because I think I can help. I think I can help increase membership. I think I can help increase outreach mm -hmm. in the, the people that are, aren't, you know, being touched as much as they should be, you know, uh, with by NRA outreach. So that's what I want to do. And uh, dag nabbit, I'm going to try to do it. If I don't win this year, I'm not going to run a petition next year. If I get nominated, that's fine. If I don't, this is my last hurrah on petition. I can't ask all you people to do this every year. It's, it's just not fair. So that's, that's my story, Jerry. So you want to talk about uh, us gun owners. You know, uh, Levi Strauss is now uh, donating millions of dollars to anti-gun stuff. Exactly. Yeah, Dick Sporting Goods took a monster hit. But NRA sent out an email, NRA Shooting Illustrated. Last year, this is a, a survey that was done between the NRA and NSSF with gun manufacturers and suppliers. This is a low ball number because they didn't capture gun ranges and everything else in there per se. 
Last year, Americans spent $16.9 billion on target shooting. Okay? All right? And that provides 329,000 jobs, generates $2.9 billion in federal tax revenue, and $2.3 billion in state and local taxes. Okay? I wonder what the uh, sport of tennis brought in. Yeah, the daily... The total daily economic impact is $46 million a day. So $46 million a day is being spent by sportsmen. Gun people. I'm not talking about hunters or right. fishermen, no, that, okay? That this call, it, it kind of leaves them out, right? It doesn't include them in the study. No, it's, they're not in the study. So more than 50, 50 million people take aim at a target at least once a year. 20 million of those enthusiasts spend an average of 20 days annually at a gun range. Most people participate in target shoot, more in target shooting than play tennis, soccer, or baseball combined. Female participation has increased 81% since 2001. You know, while you're just quoting these statistics, it's not surprising now why uh, the anti-gun side is so rabidly involved in trying to do whatever they can to dissuade people from getting into the yeah. shooting. Insurance, sport. credit, yep. shaming, uh, you know, bringing bands, out backdoor bans, ammunition, like they're doing in California. And yeah, anything so they can. Handgun shooting was the most popular discipline, coming in at 14 million enthusiasts. Rifles run a, a second with 12.2 million. 10 million for shotguns and 3.3 million uh, muzzle loaders. So the top five states, so we really can't blame the FUDs here, by the way. There's 13 million handgun enthusiasts, uh, all right, and that's a popular uh, discipline. So we really can't blame the shotgun people because if you take 13.8 million uh, rifle and 12.2 million for uh, uh, um, handgun and rifle together, you're looking at 26 million people compared to 10 million for shotgun and 3 million for muzzleloader. So yeah. we outnumber them two to one. Yeah. So we really can't blame the FUDs for everything. We right. need to get more of the black rifle and handgun people out there. That's what I, uh, you know, uh, that's what I decipher through here. Mm -hmm. so, so listen to this. The top five states for number of handgun target shooting participants. Texas, 1.3 million. No surprise. You ready for this one? California. 1.1 million. Surprise. Yes. Florida, three quarters of a million. No surprise. Pennsylvania, 600,000. Mm -hmm. Ohio, half a million. Retail sales in each state, respectively, generated by pistol shooters alone. You ready? Texas, 525 million. California, 507 million. Florida, 400 million. Pennsylvania, 260 million. And Ohio, 259 million. Now, here's another one because, you know, all of our states scared the gun manufacturers out. All we have left is Henry Rifle in Bayonne. Right. Aside from the regional economic activity generated by enthusiasts visiting local ranges, the nationwide impact is better seen in the areas where full-time jobs are created and supported by target shooting. Oregon leads 7,500 workers involved in the target shooting. Wow. Yes. Despite its middle-of-the-pack status and total number of participants in the sport, Idaho comes in with 7,300, and Montana rounds out the top three with 7,200, okay? It's, there's more target shooters than baseball players. This should be our new national pastime, actually, Yeah. okay? Right. Uh, but people don't want to hear it, but the proof is in the pudding right there. I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't get any stronger than that. And then what happens is... We have somebody like uh, Phil Murphy now. His, uh, his report just came out. And the 15 states that supplied New Jersey with the most illegal guns so far this year. Okay? Well, you know. Go ahead. You read it. chime in here? Please. Uh, it, it, it is just such lousy <laughs> reporting, hack journalism. Of course. Because it should really read the 15 states where guns were <laughs> stolen and then brought into New Jersey. Correct. Stolen or illegally purchased uh, illegally after purchased. they were stolen. And, and usually they're mostly stolen from someone's home or someone's car or, or someplace. So, so and that, did you notice they don't talk about how many guns came from New Jersey? 
No. In the article? No. Because it's probably the, under 10. Right. And did you see the numbers that they were talking about as far as guns? To 9, 10, yeah. 20? Well, number one was Pennsylvania. 171 guns. Right. 108 came from Georgia. 107 well, well, from one Virginia. Is it's in a adjoining state. Yes. And what I hated about this hack writer was the What's fact his that... Name? Oh, How sexist. I said, it, was it Matt Arco? Let yeah, me see. Well, it was... Uh, no, Tom Moriarty. Tom yeah. Moriarty. He, I mean, he's, he's a hack. No talent. A hack. And, and the, the fact that they, they try to couch this entire article that all these bad guns are coming up the, quote, iron, iron pipeline, pipeline from southern states yes. that have southern states. So southern states like Vermont, southern states like Pennsylvania, southern states like Delaware, all of these states are not southern states. Sure. But they will, it doesn't fit the narrative. So they'll lie, he outright lies with his statistics. Of course. And he backs it up with actual truth that disproves his headline. But you want to know something? 82% of the guns came from out of state. Right. 82%. But yet they're going to continue to tighten our laws. The fall session is coming. Well, it's not going to change because everybody's still voting for their pensions, which Correct. surprise are going to disappear whether you like it or not because that market is collapsing. I talked to a guy yesterday who manages pension funds. He's like, all of the investment bankers who manage pension funds are pulling their fucking money out of pension funds because they're about to collapse. He said, you saw the housing market go down? This is going to be even worse. It's and a I big Ponzi of, scheme. There's no money there. There's no money there. We're trillions in dollars yeah. overspent in all the pensions. Right. Writing checks. Good for them, I say. Fuck them. <laughs> Stand by. <laughs> is that bad? Does that make me a bad person? No. This segment is brought to you by Medallion Chiropractic. Dr. Henry Medallion is located on Valley Road in Wayne, New Jersey. And it's spelled, I have to always look it up, M-A-D-A-L-I-A-N, Medallion Chiropractic. It's pronounced Medallion, but it's spelled M-A-D-A-L-I-A-N. The doc can help you. Platinum member of the range. All his boys shoot here, shoots here with a bunch of other people. We have to support those who support us. Uh, you or anyone you know live within a 30-mile radius of Valley Road in Wayne. Go check out Medallion Chiropractic. If you're outside that circle, refer friends and family. Let people know about it. Go on, give them some reviews. Send them an email and encourage him to continue to support Gun For Hire Radio. Also, do not forget our other sponsor, Lipstick Bodyguard. I spoke yesterday to the Pequonic Rotary Club, and I brought a Lipstick Bodyguard with me. They wouldn't let me mace any of the old oh, uh, ladies oh, that were really? there, but had a good discussion, and we talk about this product all the time. This shit is lethal. It's three quarters of an ounce, and you can get through a lot of security <laughs> checkpoints with it, especially fellas if you wear your heels, they're not going to search you that well. Uh, so Bloomberg's at it again. Now we're going after uh, the CMP. And the assaults are not going to stop, all right? No, no. Uh, especially with those statistics you just read. They've got those statistics, too. Yes. You know, and they're frightened. When, when you get, you don't attack people you're not afraid of. Correct. The... The CMP has been around for about 150 years, I believe. The Civilian Marksmanship Program was pretty much started almost like with the NRA, and it broke off from the NRA. And what the CMP does is it's to teach civilians marksmanship skills uh, starting at a young age. And you can also buy surplus rifles and surplus equipment from the military rather than have it destroyed. And the CMP sponsors matches all over the world. I used to do I used to do CMP uh, uh, postal matches oh, in the wow. '80s, where you would shoot a target in front of an instructor, and they would sign it, and you'd mail it in, and you'd mail it in with like a dollar or two dollars back in the day, yeah, cash yeah. in the mail, and then you would get your awards. You know, they would mail you a little pin or a plaque or a ribbon of How what cool your qualification was, was. and. Uh, so CMP is funded by the government and private donors, but Bloomberg and his people now are attacking it. This was the headline in Bloomberg. You ready? Uh, this group teaches kids to love guns and U.S. taxpayers foot the bill. <laughs> 
Well, our college professors in state-run universities teach our kids to hate our country, yeah, and we, the people, the pay yeah, for that's it. That's right. So all is fair in love and war. That's oh, how I look at it. And if you live in the state of New Jersey... Uh, illegals go to school for free. Go to school for free. So and they learn. They learn for free right. to hate they the country, the country. Yeah. that we, the people, <laughs> pay for. How great is that? Isn't that a wonderful way? Okay. So they're going after the CMP now, and you know I, I read some comments by by Knappen, and uh, you know they're going after the manufacturers, they're going after the banks, they're going after the credit card companies, they're going after the yeah. CMP. Next, you're going to see, watch. Rifle merit badge is going to disappear from scouting. Oh, absolutely. Watch. Sure. That's, yeah. that's, that's that's definitely. That's target. Yeah, we can't have the kids with rifles or shotguns or muzzle loaders. All of the firearm disciplines are going to disappear. You're okay? starting to see that now because you have less and less Boy Scouts coming in. Correct. Know? So what, what the CMP does and what it's done over the years, you know, how many kids in the Midwest, forget about the, the coast where, you know, space is limited. There are so many CMP-sponsored matches and ranges all over the country that is just a part of Heartland America, okay? And, of course, Bloomberg now and his people, they have to go after that because they're not going to be satisfied until every gun is gone except for a military state. This is all part of a progressive agenda. Read Rules for Radicals. Slice at a time. Not, read the book Nudge, Cass Sunstein. Oh, Cass. I, I, yeah. I read halfway through the book. I got upset. Yeah. Uh, okay, so check this out. A federal court strikes down California law that bans handgun sales. Yeah. Uh, signs, excuse me. Yeah. Bans handgun signs. Uh, a gun range in Sacramento uh, put signs outside of a store of ARs and uh, 45s and stuff. And, of course, the left got their uh, undies in a bunch yep. and freaked out about it. And they sued. They, there was a 15-foot depiction of a modern sporting rifle. And believe it or not, Judge Nunley uh, in California, feder a federal court, said uh, the signs can stay because they're protected under the First Amendment. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. Uh, so, it's uh, they're going to appeal it. By the way, of uh, the, the anti-gunners they're going to drag it into court as much as they possibly can. But this is what we're dealing with every day. Every day we're just we're getting hit everywhere. I learned so much uh, uh, legislative stuff at, at the at the board meetings and so much that's going on uh, in the undertow. Like anything you can talk about. Just like the NRA can't buy commercials on any mainstream uh, media or any, uh, you know, Google, Facebook, but, but or anything no like that. Right? No, they they just can't. And they they did an, uh, a nine eleven tribute with Oliver North, and they Fox News was the only one that would let them uh, broadcast it. Yeah, you. What's happening right now? Speaking of the First Amendment, is you're getting censorship from everywhere. Yes, and and that's what's driving you crazy. Is that you can't come out and put uh, say anything pro-American without being censored. Nope. Say on Reddit, right? But there are subreddits that uh, there was a whole list of them I, I read this morning, and I was like, oh my god, there's like a necrophilia subreddit, which is fine. That's okay. There's one where you necrophilia. Can, yeah. There's one where you can uh, one where you can see a monkey stripped of its skin. That's fine. Uh, there's one where there's children wearing naked suits. I mean, they're not naked children, but they're they're wearing suits wearing that make them look naked. Make them look naked. That's okay. That's perfectly fine. Uh, but you can't put a picture of an American flag and say anything patriotic about it. You'll be removed from Reddit. I also, uh, while we're talking, I mentioned September 11th. Your 23 mil uh, minute. Um, uh, September 11th tribute. We got a lot of uh, play off of that, and I want to thank you for producing that and every year putting it on the September 11th tribute show. I can never not listen to it without, you know, without tearing up. And a, and a lot of listeners shared it and told other people they should uh, listen to it and share it with their friends and family. And it is so, it is just so true that, uh, you know, uh, we forget it's been 17 years, and uh, the media has done a lot to try to make us forget it. And the uh, schools. And the globalists and the schools, et, et, et cetera. Do you know that you cannot teach anything about September 11th? I mean, stop and think about this. The kids who are voting this year, 
were born around that time. Yes, they don't have they no recollection. It's to, it's to them, September 11th is a lot like it was when we were kids, like for World War II, Two. Or Korea. Yeah, Vietnam. Korea. No, I would. I remember Nam. I remember at night on, on the TV them reading the names of the deceased off. Right, so that right. has a little closer impact to me. But I have no recollection of Korea. Obviously, I was born yeah. in '61, right. and World War II World was, War II. It was just like a history, history lesson. History. Yeah. yeah, and now it's and it's basically taught like that, and it cannot be taught without uh, being. I mean, even in the media, you see any any reference to it. Thanks to organizations like CARE, uh, you see references to it as if we were the aggressor, and basically we got what was coming. Yes. Yeah. So I think you did a phenomenal job with that, and you know, again, I'm blown away uh, that you did that job. And uh, there got a lot of good feedback, and people retweeted it and everything. And you know, speaking of that, uh, I do a rant almost every day. I did not do a rant on September 11th. I did not post anything on September 11th. I did not do a rant. Uh, I just posted the 23-minute uh, clip that you produced. Uh, just out of respect for all the fallen, you know, and uh, by the way, all of the dogs that worked on that rescue effort are deceased now, too. Yeah. You know, looking for bodies and, you know, Many of them rescue. died uh, from a lot of the diseases. Correct. And there's a lot of people still dying from Correct. the diseases. Just rescue workers. I was there on September 12th. I was supposed to be there September 11th at my office, but I was working from Jersey that day. And um, I remember I was there from September 12th to on. And uh, those of us who, who experienced it, uh, you know, firsthand, uh, the thing that I was talking to a colleague, I lost a very close friend and colleague in the Pentagon, and, you know, in, in typical fashion for his, you know, his personality, he, he was out, they were, they got out of the area that had collapsed, and uh, I, I, I went to school with this guy, and he, he went back in. And uh, was dragging people out. I mean, that's what a doctor does, right? Yeah. And uh, was killed in a, a collapse of the building. You know, the last time he went in. And uh, you know, it's 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 stuff that you remember. I lost a lot of friends at Cantor Fitzgerald. I mean, my entire town at the time, basically half the damn town, uh, worked at Cantor Fitzgerald. And, I was uh, I was sharing a story with uh, Patty the other night that I went to uh, ShopRite in Nutley like a week after it happened and there was a woman with three children who would all look like they had seen ghosts and the woman looked, you know, distraught and they were buying like two carts full of groceries and they were in front of me and I was wondering what, you know, the whole country was numb but I was like numb and I was one, you know, being inquisitive, I'm like, what's going on here? And then she took out uh, this book, like a coupon book and she paid for everything, and the four of them left. There was a woman and, and three daughters. And the cashier told me that uh, her husband was killed in one of the buildings, or was missing still in one of the buildings. And this was a 9-11 re emergency relief fund. So, like, they, they gave out, like, a like a family first, like, almost like a food stamp right, credit. Like, right. people got, you know, money so they could feed their families because, you know, like Cantor Fitzgerald, you're not getting another payroll check. The entire company perished. Right, exactly. You know, so, uh, you know, and it's funny how 17 years later I still get chills when I think of that exchange yeah. of just observing them. And obviously the girls are probably grown and hopefully through college now and hopefully the mom is kind of readjusted. But that whole in their heart will never ever go away and um, our governments and our media do their best to make Just us forget that over, i mean yeah. jackass joe scarborough said that the trump presidency is worse than the 9-11 terrorist attacks how disrespectful to the 2800 people that died and the tens of thousands of friends and family members of the deceased how disrespectful man he's got that forehead where i would like to slap him right in his oh my god I, it's amazing they're truly truly unhinged i mean joy bear on the view she said that uh trump should die it's just, it's unbelievable i'm tired of it i can't get the, the two things that i can't get out of my mind out of my memory is the smell yeah and the posters with all the pictures yeah i'll never forget i will never forget I, I spent two fucking weeks there and trying to get these fucking guys to wear masks 
I brought in cases of masks and eye wash and everything else and just patching these fucking guys up. They were like animals. They just kept going back and going back and going back. Not questioning anything. No, no. They just, it was unbelievable. I, I've never seen such friggin' bravery in my whole life. But everybody, you're right, everybody was numb. It, it was like a, a, a weird, it was a weird thing. I was numb. Yeah. I, I saw the second building get hit live. I was standing in a parking lot at Sea Cook. It's Richo, Matt. We were next yeah, to each other. Yeah. Uh, we, we were looking. We saw a uh, building on fire. We thought a small plane hit it. Yeah. And then we see this wide body jet come over us way too low. Yeah, I was like, right. oh, they must have rerouted it or right. something. And it struck the building right in right. front of us. Right. And I was like, I turned and I said, we're at war. Yeah. He'll take Matt. Uh, <laughs> this segment is brought to you by Gun Sitters. Gun Sitters on Route 10 in uh, Whippany and their military division weapons guard. They also have one out in Easton, Pennsylvania, one in Salisbury, Maryland, and one in Hawaii opening soon. Check out gunsitters.com. Support those who support yeah, us. Matt, you have to take that entire conversation. He out. will. He will. I'll make sure. It's only on the YouTube. Yeah, I said stuff I can't be saying. So Gene Rossi said something about. Uh, uh, He's a 68-year-old U.S. Air Force Vietnam veteran and I've had many emotional ups and downs in my life. I have to admit, the opening of show 380 was well done and kudos to all of you. That's Sandy, by the way. With that said, I, admit, I am admitting that it was, it was too emotional for me to listen to in its entirety. Living in North Jersey at the time, as you know, many of us had connections of people in those towers that day. Some that came home and some that didn't. I hope that those that didn't, uh, that didn't feel the pain directly will listen and remember what happened that day. Thanks for keeping us alive. God bless you and your staff. Thank we you, Gene Rossi. That yeah, that's why I wanted to talk about it. You know, Rob Morse, M-O-R-S-E, on September 5th, wrote a great article for Jews for the Preservation of Firearms Ownership. And Rob's a good friend of ours. And he wrote about uh, school safety and watching, uh, you know, how the press twist everything around. So he sent questions out. Will school resource officers be armed or not? Okay. Have unarmed school resource officers stop attacked in school? Some have, some tried, some have failed. Will school resource officers be on campus every day when students or staff are on campus? Usually not. Will school resource officers be in the building? What about the sports fields, the library, and the cafeteria? Nope. Will there be enough school resource officers to treat the injured after an attack? Nope. Did the schools have a regular safety audit to see if they actually perform as the ways of their safety plan? Nope. These are questions, you know, people just saying, well, we're going to get a school a resource officer uh, or two. Uh, I know towns that have one school resource officer for four schools, and they bounce around from school to school. How does that work? Tell me how that works. The problem is, we all know, Rob, we could have 80 school resources or resource officers in one school, but because of political correctness and no one uh, willing to take a stand, evil will allow. Well, look at so, what happened in Florida. They yes. Had, they had resource officers. They knew about that kid, and they still allowed it to happen. And they hid in the closet. Yes, because of uh, political correctness, yes. and no one wants to be the guy yeah. or girl to take the stand or say something, so it's a bunch of bullshit. But, Rob, I commend you. Everybody should read the article. Just Google JPFO, Rob Morse. The article is uh, September 5th. And, he, you know, he's talking about how the media, you know, they, they fluff around the questions and everything. And then what happens is everybody thinks they're safe until another one happens. And when another one happens, we're going to find out they circumvented a federal background check, they did this, they did that, or whatever the case may be. And, of course, they're going to... Of course, they're going to blame the gun. That was uh, Joe Senti from the ATF. They're, give, they're dropping off a bunch of challenge coins for me, a dog challenge coin, too. Oh, a dog challenge coin? Yeah, I'm going to get it in oh. a minute. Yeah, ATF. It's a drug and uh, bomb-sniffing dog, so oh. yeah, I'll let you look at it from a distance Thanks. if you want. Thanks. His dog's out in the car, by the way. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, we're not allowed to touch him. He's working. He has his vest on. Oh, he does? Yeah. Vest off, not working. Remember when we had yeah, Behavior yeah. Plus in here? Yeah. yeah, no vest. They're off the clock. Uh, so it's fall now, and again, uh, um, before we uh, go too deep into it, uh, I just want to go over some fall prevention tips, uh, which we haven't done in a while. And, uh, you know, they always have these fire prevention months. I think every month, you know, should be a fire pre prevention month. <laughs> But now that the winter's coming, you know, daylight savings time is coming soon. And all of you listeners that have been listening for eight years, daylight savings time. Batteries change in your smoke and carbon monoxide detectors. 
uh, check your fire extinguishers in your house. Uh, batteries and flashlights. I mean, you should already have these like EverReady or Red Cross flashlights that are plugged into the outlets like I have. Right. You should have a bundle of 50 Siloom mm -hmm. light sticks. Mm -hmm that you crack cheap. and shake. Or Amazon.com, they're like 40 cent a piece. Yeah. You should have a box of 50. I have like 150 yeah, at home. Uh, yeah, listen, they're, they're really, really good. So some fall tips, all right? Check your smoke detectors, carbon monoxide detectors. Have a family fire drill. Change all your batteries. Make sure you check your fire extinguishers. If you lived in that house 10 years and you got kitty fire extinguishers that you bought at a big box store, they're probably due for a replacement. You should look yeah. at the expiration date on them. And they should be accessible. You know, one outside the perimeter larger room, one in the garage, uh, one at the top of the stairs to the basement. The one in the kitchen should not be in a cabinet under the stove where you can't reach it if the stove is on fire, okay? Think about where you're going to place them. Uh, don't buy vanity fire extinguishers. Buy bright red ones so they're indelible in your mind, all right? They, they have chrome ones. They have white ones. On. I saw in Touch of Modern, they have them in violet color and this, oh, you know. Accentuate your apartment with it. You don't want something. A fire extinguisher is supposed to stand out. Yeah, right, when you're exactly. in the stress and your fight or flight reflexes yeah. kick in, you don't I don't, blend I'm in. looking for a red fire extinguisher. <laughs> right, exactly. Okay? Uh, turn your heater on now and make sure it works. Yep. Well, don't wait until we have that cold snap. Okay, uh, if you use any type of portable or space heaters, make sure you keep them away from clothing, bedding, drapery, and furniture. Remember to shut them off before you leave their house, and never leave them unattended if you have children or pets. Big, you burn your dog with an electric space heater. You got to deal with me. Yeah. I'm telling you right now. You burn your kid. You got to deal with diphus. Right. Uh, do not no, we use. Don't care about your kid. We, can, we care about the animal. Typhus is for there for that. Because if I slap the kid or a parent, no. Anyway, uh, do not use your space heater as a dryer for hats, gloves, and other articles of clothing. You come in out of the cold rain right. or shoveling snow, combustible. Right. Okay? <laughs> if you have a fireplace, get the chimney inspected. Make sure it's good. Make sure the bricks and mortar are good. Make sure the liner is good. You don't want to die of carbon monoxide right. poisoning. All right? Make sure you keep matches, lighters, and candles out of reach of children and pets especially. If you know your dog jumps on the table or jumps up, you should probably not have a candle on your coffee table. Use your head, ladies and gentlemen, okay? Never leave candles unattended. My mother learned me that, okay? Now's the time your dryer vents and filters should be cleaned. There are professional dryer vent companies that charge like $50. They will right. come out with a machine <laughs> and Sucked suck it, right it out. Yeah. I live in a gated community. Twice a year they come and do it. It's part of our oh, really? HOA, v, oh, HOA that's fees. That's yes. Good. All right. Look outside. Any roof shingles, any gutters hanging off, any concrete that might be cracked if you own a house. Check it out now. Now's a good time to check all your outside light fixtures. Mm -hmm. If you have incandescent bulbs, change them now yeah. before it's 40 below zero out. <laughs> yeah, exactly. right? Get your gutters cleaned after the leaves have finished falling. Also, if you have an extension ladder, make sure it's either locked up in the garage, the basement, or it's chained to your deck or something so that you don't leave it there for the thieves to rob your house, okay? If you're going to leave an extension ladder unattended, unlocked in your backyard, you might as well leave a window open, too. So this way, when they break in, they don't break yeah, the just, window. Yeah, it costs right? more money. Remember now, your car. You should have a little shovel in your car. You should have... a uh, a little emergency kit in your car with a blanket, maybe some water, some energy bars, maybe some flares in your car, all right? It's not a bad idea to have a little salt in your car. Now's a good time to buy two windshield cleaners, you know, the, the, the snow brushes for your car. Yep. Two of them. Because I don't know about you, because these cheap stuff from wherever it comes from, I've had them break on me before. Yeah. All right, we get 12 inches of snow, and it breaks, and now you're going to clean your windshield with your credit card. Right. Buy two. If you want, buy a little short one for like dollar ninety nine, and then I have the extension yeah, ones yeah, the extension that, and you sweep right. off the top right. of the car, so I don't have to go around. These are the things that you should should be taking care of. All right. Also, make sure if you if you don't wear prescription glasses, make sure you have sunglasses because the sun is lower now, mm -hmm. and there's a lot more glare and there's yeah. more more accidents. All right. Especially early in the morning. Correct. This one I put, but you know, if your pets spend a lot of time outdoors or live outside, if your pet live outside, you shouldn't have a pet. Okay, that's rule number one. But make sure your pet is fed and, 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 uh, and kept warm so they can retain their body heat. Now, I use on Winston, they have a, a Patty bought them this uh, salve called uh, Musher's Friend. 
like that they, they put on his paws. Oh. And we put it on before we go out so that the rock salt doesn't irritate his paws. Yeah. And then I have uh, wipes to clean his paws when we come in, so if there's any rock salt, because it's very oh. irritating. Uh, Is that what those for tushy adults. wipes were? That, yeah, no, tushy wipes are for his butt. Oh, okay. But, but they make paw wipes. Oh. And I have them at home, so when we come in or anything, it's, it's important. Now, now look around at your house. Uh, make sure that there's no junk mail on the end of the driveway because that's an invitation to have your house robbed. Make sure you have alarm stickers on your house, even if you don't have an alarm. Maybe a camera sticker, even if you don't have one. I just installed the, uh, uh, the, uh, the doorbell uh, camera. Not, not the ring, the Nest. It's called Nest Home. And it has facial recognition, you know. So my mother and father came. I logged them in. My cleaning lady came. I logged them in. Now I get a notification. Norma was at the front door. Mom was at the front door or whatever. It's, it's really cool. Yeah, that's pretty cool. But even if you can't afford any of that stuff, if you have stickers, uh, most of the time the bad guy will rob your next door neighbor. A few months ago we discussed the number one deterrent uh, to stop your house from getting broken into is a car in a driveway. So if you're going away for two days and you're taking the primary car, if you have a secondary car, don't leave it in the garage. Park it in the driveway. Yeah, perfect. Right. Okay? Because right. now the bad guy doesn't know you, if somebody's you home. That. Yes. Light timers. You know, have a few random timers in your house if you don't have a smart home. Go to Home Depot and buy those little click-on and click-off timers. Put one in the living room, one in one bedroom, and one in another bedroom. And have them go on and off at random. Uh, a total, total lifesaver, I can tell you right now. So these are things that you should do. You should be walking around your house and making, it, doing an audit right now, fix everything while it's still the temperatures are between 60 and 90. They've been fluctuating. Because, you know, we tend to do everything a little more half-assed when the temperature gets below 40. Oh, well, yeah. You, just, you want to get it done, get the hell out of there. Correct. Oh, also, windshield washer fluid. Mm -hmm. You know, it's 99 to $1.49 a gallon now. now. Yeah, next time you go to a dollar store or something, buy six or eight bottles. Mm -hmm. Put them in the trunk of your car. That won't freeze, by the way. Uh, but you can have them in the trunk of your car. It's a good time to get your car serviced. Now, if you're close to an oil change, tire rotation, do it now before it's 20 below zero. Yeah. Tell the mechanic to check your battery. They, it's called a load test. Tell the mechanic to do a load test on your battery. Load if your load test. If your car is over four or five years old, they, they put the tester across the terminals and they put a load across the battery and they see how deep the cycle rate is. And if they see it's it's you know if it's a reputable guy, he'll be honest with you. You know, but what'll happen is if if it doesn't do well on the load test, the first day it's below zero, you're gonna come out to click, 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 click. The other thing is if you have wireless keypads on any of your doors. Get ready to change the batteries because when it gets colder, the batteries don't hold their charge as long. And you also can uh, change the batteries now in your key fobs for your cars. Oh, yeah. Because when it gets idea. cold, they, we always get the error right. that you replace the battery. Right. Be preemptive. Do it daylight savings yeah. time. Do it next month. So these are some tips I have. The next thing I want to talk about is uh, we still have eight seats left for Masad Ayub, uh, MAG 40 and MAG 20, October 4th, 5th, and 6th. Please check it out. You will love it, all right? Masad Ayub is the man. It's on the Gun For Hire website. Do not forget, support those who support us, all of our great sponsors. And Calandro for NRA, we have two weeks left to get those petitions in. You want me on that board. You need me on that board. Yeah, that's for damn sure. You come here in your faggoty white suit and try. Anyway, oh, sorry, few good men soliloquy. I'm done. Sandy, take it. Well, listen, uh, <laughs> I don't know how to top that one, but <laughs> if you are the child of an aging parent, you might want to tune in to Parents Are Hard to Raise. You can find the show on any iHeartRadio station, the iHeartRadio app. Um, it's also on uh, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and now on Spotify. So you 180 million listeners on Spotify can also get Parents Are Hard to Raise. Uh, this week, I think they're talking about um, something fun, like urinary tract infections. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, <coughs> next week, it's um, next Tuesday. Show come new show comes out every Tuesday. Um, if you are the child of an aging parent or caring for uh, an aging parent, it'll help you keep your sanity. Uh, the show is done by someone who absolutely knows what she's talking about. I know I'm married to she's her. She's the best. This is. And <laughs> so. 
All right. Uh, thank you, guys. And remember, Calandro for NRA. Calandro for NRA. Please get whatever petitions you can. You can get them online uh, at Calandro for NRA. Uh, sign them. Uh, get as many people as you know to sign them. <laughs> and we are going to uh, ask you guys sometime in...